Greetings, travelers. So today we have a very different kind of tutorial. Instead of showing you how to do various things within Minecraft, although this is Minecraft related, I'm going to take some time today to answer, probably for me, one of the most common questions I get. Uh, most of the time I work on my mod packs, or even just play Minecraft in general, I use a program called MultiMC. Uh, it actually is a very powerful, very easy to use Minecraft launcher. And for me, it makes development of mod packs very easy, but not so much for everybody else. A lot of the people that help me out uh, in beta testing and everything, in order to get the releases to them before they're available on the launcher, they have to use MultiMC. And I've had to explain how to do it on multiple occasions. And while I do it in chat, and they do get how to do it, I figured a video would be much easier to show. Uh, you know, show me, don't tell me. So, first thing we're going to do is MultiMC, and I'll put a link down in the description, is a Minecraft launcher. Uh, one of the nice side effects or side benefits of it is that you can categorize different things. Like for me, I have... I don't have a name here, but this is where I put my vanilla instances, uh, FTB or Feed the Beast, uh, the mod packs that I'm working on, and you know my son uses it too, so he has his own category. Now the biggest thing that I get asked is how to add a a pack to MultiMC. You know, with the launchers that are out there, Feed the Beast, the Curse Launcher. Uh, at launcher, Technic, you name it, they all have their own method of having it, but it's easy for the end user because you literally just click a button typically and it installs and starts. With MultiMC, not so much, but it gives you a lot more flexibility. So the way we're going to get started here is we're going to create a new category. So first, well, first we're going to create an instance. So we're going to go instance, this screen, Make sure you know what version of Minecraft the mod pack that you're going to use is a part of. Okay, so that's important because that's going to determine the version. So we'll give it a, t a title. All right, and we're going to go since the mod packs that I have are 1.7, we're going to go with that. And when you click that, you'll see every current version of Minecraft that is available. Uh, we're going to choose 1.7, 1.7.10, and we're going to go OK. So there's two ways that you can do this instance. This one is the longhand way. So we're going to go with this, and we'll pick a, uh, let's go with this one. We'll just pick one randomly. All right, and hit OK. That'll immediately create the instance up here. Now, for this tutorial, we're going to create an, a group. So we're going to change group. We're going to give it a new name. That'll move it into that group in particular. Now, before you can add the mod pack to this, you're going to have to run it once with just the vanilla. Let it run. Load to the main screen, which will be very quick because, well, let's be honest, Minecraft on its own loads quickly quit. Once this is ready, close it. Now, since it's Forge, this is the key point. You have to know what version of Forge the pack that you're going to be using uses. Uh, either ask the developer of the pack, if it's your friend, whatever, but you're going to want to know exactly which version of Forge because when you go, you're going to hit Edit Instance and then over here on the side you'll see Install Forge. And for whatever version of Minecraft you chose, it's going to show you every version of Forge that is available currently for that version. So the trick here, though, is again, you need to know what version of Forge this is going to be for. Uh, for right now, we're going to go with the star. The star always indicates the current recommended version. 
you hit OK and close and then you're going to run it again. Now what this is doing is it's setting up, it's, it's getting all the, just in case this is the first 1.710 instance you've created and the first time you've used this version of Forge, it gives each time you create it and run it, it downloads all the different files and libraries it needs for that particular version if it doesn't have it already. So it's always a good thing to run it like I'm showing you where you create the instance, run it as vanilla. Save and close, choose Forge, run it like we just did, and then quit again. Alright, now this is ready. So the next step, and this is easy, is you click Instance Folder. This will open up the window on your computer for where that instance is set up. These are the base folders that MultiMC uses. The one that you're interested in is Minecraft. So what you would do here is you would end up taking, well, I'll show you. Go here. Uh, no, not there. Uh, so we'll use an older version for this just for the sake of the tutorial. Come on, give me. Why is my mouse not working? There we go. Copy here. Close this window out. Alright, so you'll see inside the folders they'll have this. Something similar. And this is if the player is using multi-MC. But really, depending on how they're doing it, they really only need certain icons. So... You're always, if there is one, you're going to go to the Minecraft folder, and you'll see here we have just three, two folders in a file. You literally would just extract that in here. And then you might get this warning. Go ahead and just replace anything that's there. Now, this is with a brand new instance. This will not work for updates that have to be done differently. And that's not going to be a part of this tutorial. But you'll see, and you, know, you got those folders in there. So if you come back and you go play, hopefully this doesn't crash because this is way, oh, yeah, way older version than what I'm currently using. So that particular part's not going to work. But as long as you have all the settings correct, the version of Minecraft, and actually 1.44 was for my 1.64 pack. So that's why it's not working. Uh, we'll scratch that for now. Uh, but once it gets loaded, it should load up, and you can start your world and everything else. If you do get crashes, that's something you'll have to talk to whoever gave you the package for. So that's the first way to do this. Now, the other way is, like for my case, I do development of my mod pack on here. So as the developer, I can go export instance, tell it to copy all of that, Tell it where to save it. And this is if you want to do it too. So it'll help you if you want to ever like create a mod pack for your friends and then give it to them. Hit OK. Once it's done, which we'll know because it goes back to the main screen. And depending on the size of the pack, that could take a while because this is everything, including the saves back of every extra folder. The other first method uh, is the way I typically do it because then I have thinned it out to only the folders that are absolutely necessary for the pack. This is the e this is a, a, an easier way for people that aren't quite familiar with what folders are, re are required or not. Downside is it takes longer to create the archive because if you have any world saves in there and they're pretty big, it's going to take a minute to archive it all because those saves themselves take a minute. Uh, also, if you have a lot of mods, it can take a little bit. So I will come back as soon as the archive is ready. All right, welcome back. So I'll show you. Here's the archive that I created, and look at that. It's four gigs. Told you 
that it would be big because it's everything that I'm working on on my dev. Now, the next step, this is the second part if you want to, if they've created, and, and you won't know until the person that gives it to you tells you. They're either going to tell you that this is, you know, either a instance to import or that you're going to do it the first method that I showed you. So, again, we're going to create instance. special character Give this tutorial and instead of clicking this you're going to do import mod pack local file or link and you're going to navigate to wherever you've downloaded this to do that and then click OK now it's going to take a minute because it's got to open the archive and extract everything so once that's done I'll be back again alright welcome back and now you'll see that the icon is there. If you open up the folder where it's supposed to be, you'll see it's there. And everything that came with that package is done. So those are the two easy ways to get an instance created uh, by getting full files from someone else. Now a couple of side points you're going to want to do. And this is depending on the mod pack that you're using. But making sure you have your memory and everything else. So the way you're going to do that is when you have the icon selected, edit instance. And then you're going to go to settings. Now mine, I've already set up default and when you import, it should import the settings as well when you do that second method. But this will basically set up everything, you know, how you set up everything. The window size, any custom commands. Most importantly part is the Java and the memory. Always want to make sure you have that set up. Now if you're using Java 8, which I am, the permagen is not as important because Java 8 actually handles that on its own now. You no longer have to set that. Uh, if you have any custom Java arguments, make sure those are in there. Now the easiest way to do that is before you have any instances, when you have multi-MC freshly downloaded, is to change those settings ahead of time because then what will happen is that every you know every instance you create after that will get those same base settings so I hope this helps with understanding how to use multi MC and how to add instances uh, if there's any questions don't forget please leave comments in the or leave your comments in the section below uh, don't forget to subscribe and like first time I've ever told you guys that, but thank you very much everybody for coming by, and have a great day.